Master, Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Michael Anthony Cuff, Mr. Alan Lewis, Chairman of Jamaica Stock Exchange, Mrs. Marlene Street Forest, General Manager, Jamaica Stock Exchange, members of the Diplomatic Corps, and international organizations present here. Mr. Robin Levy, Deputy General Manager, Jamaica Stock Exchange, and General Manager, Jamaica Central Securities, Depository Limited, and a friend of Jamaica, and I could refer to him as Jam America, <laughs> Mr. Gregor Fischel, Managing Director of Oppenheim and Company Incorporated. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have to recognize in a very special way the gentleman that drew the attention of our entertainer, Demario, and his wife, our Honorable Minister, A.J. Nicholson, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, hard-working Minister of Foreign Affairs, lives on an aircraft, and uh, I want to welcome in a very special way his loving and enduring wife, <laughs> Mrs. Nicholson. And I want to also, and he is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and the, we also have a young Minister of State, Honorable Arnold Brown, present with us as well tonight. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, I welcome the opportunity to join you again this year at this premier event, which has become a fixture on the national business calendar. On behalf of the government, I commend the board and management of the Jamaica Stock Exchange for organizing this forum for discussion on the seven. Caribbean economic outlook each year. Congratulations. <laughs> As you contemplate the conference theme of regional transformation through innovation and investments, I hope the discussions over the coming days will give rise to insightful ideas. Such ideas and answers are useful as we continue to strengthen the fundamentals of the Jamaican economy and to position ourselves for sustainable growth and prosperity. I want to thank Mr. Fisher for his kind words about Jamaica. We know it will be painful, but I want to thank the Jamaican people for their understanding and support during this period of difficulties. I really want to thank them. Had it not been for their understanding and support, we would not be where we are today in terms of the economy. Achieving sustainable growth and development means nothing unless it takes full account of the social, economic, and environmental pillars. These three pillars, known as the triple bottom line, have been central to the government's efforts to correct historic social inequities. We are building the economic base to improve standards of living and to enhance the resilience of our economy to external shocks and natural hazards. As Mr. Fisher said earlier, it was not easy for us, but we stuck with the program. We followed what we had to do, and I'm sure not long from now, we will get around the corner and we will see the light. Thank you, Jamaica. Thank the Jamaica Nation for everything you have done by way of support. 
This evening, I focus my comments on the economic pillar in the sustainable development of Jamaica. It is accepted that a vibrant stock exchange and active capital markets are vital to the Jamaican economy. In Jamaica's case, the potential contribution of our stock exchange is yet to be fully exploited. The stock exchange encourages private investors, both small and large, to become more involved in financing the development of all sectors of the economy. My hope, ladies and gentlemen, is that it will become the norm for the financial resources needed by young entrepreneurs to increasingly be mobilized through the stock market. Of course, the ability to leverage the stock market for financing carries certain responsibilities for businesses. They must be willing to subject their operations to the ultimate tests of transparency and accountability. Sometimes there is some reluctance on the part of businesses to subject themselves to this through examination. It, it must be thorough and a true examination, thus depriving themselves of access to the resources they need to finance expansion. For our part, the government commits to developing and implementing the right mix of policies to create the environment for business and commerce to flourish. We remain steadfast. We remain steadfast in our commitment to the economic reform program for the benefit of all Jamaicans. Since assuming office three years ago, the government has embarked on a growth agenda anchored in a sustainable debt reduction plan, which is being advanced through strategic local and foreign investments and innovations in traditional and emerging sectors. My administration will stay the course while relentlessly pursuing new opportunities to unleash growth in targeted sectors of the economy. As we move forward, we are committed to expanding the public-private partnership model as a reliable route to exceeding the growth projections we have set for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, the growth projections by the Planning Institute of Jamaica provide a glimpse of some of the areas targeted to produce the growth and jobs that we and jobs that we see. For the 2015-2016 fiscal year, real GDP growth of 1.9% is being projected relative to the previous fiscal year. The expectation is that growth will come mainly from the following areas: mining and quarrying, agriculture, forestry and fishing, and construction. The mining and quarrying industry is expected to benefit from increased production of aluminum and bauxite. Ladies and gentlemen, this is associated with higher global demand and the projected resumption of mining operations at the Alcott Bauxite Aluminum Plant in the first quarter of 2015. The projections tell us that services by hotels and restaurants resulting from increased stopover arrivals and long-stay visitors are expected to continue and grow. Meanwhile, transport, storage, and communication services should see growth of some 2%. These are all useful targets. However, we know that this alone is not enough to meet the job creation and income needs of the country. To significantly 
reduce poverty. And as you know, poverty is a hellish state to be in. This is why the growth strategy seeks to sharpen our focus on enhancing growth as a necessary basis for realizing sustained improvements in the social well-being of our citizens. As part of this strategy, we have laid the foundation through legislative changes and other measures to allow more Jamaicans to become entrepreneurs and for existing businesses to have greater confidence to invest in Jamaica. We are aggressively pursuing infrastructure investments as a catalyst for job creation. We will continue to facilitate a more competitive environment for large, medium, and small businesses. The results have shown significant improvement in the Global Doing Business Index. We're also continuing as a matter of priority to modernize and improve the efficiency of government. Ladies and gentlemen, the growth agenda and growth inducement strategy are premised on fiscal consolidation, business environment competitiveness reforms, human capital development, social protection, security and resilience, and strategic investments. Ladies and gentlemen, the government I lead recognizes that a critical element of achieving sustainable growth is to provide a favorable and predictable business environment. Predictable business environment that allows business people to plan, complete, com to compete globally, and certainly to create wealth. As a critical component of this, the government is reducing the cost of doing business. We are doing so by enacting reforms to the business registration and development approvals processes, collateral reform, reforms to the insolvency framework, and enhanced access to credit. There is proof that this effort is bearing fruit. As I mentioned before, we have moved up on the global doing business rankings. Jamaica has also been recognized as the best place to do business in the Caribbean. We have no time for complacency, so we are pressing ahead with the reforms. Now that we have a single form for business registration, we are aiming to have online business registration by the end of 2015. We passed the Security Interest in Personal Property Act and established the Central Collateral Registry. These measures will broaden the set of assets that may be used as collateral for loans and will allow small businesses easier access to financing. The Insolvency Act was recently passed it was recently passed and will facilitate the rehabilitation of indebted businesses and certainly encourage more people to start businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, we intend to implement a system by June 2015 that will allow the government to track the approval of construction permits across all local authorities. Much work has already been done to reduce the time for construction approvals, but there's still more to be done. Com complementary to the business environment, reforms are initiatives geared towards labor market reform and improved training and certification of labor market participants. If Jamaica is to become globally competitive, 
more flexible work arrangements are necessary. During 2014, the Employment Flexible Work Arrangements Act was passed. We're also aware, ladies and gentlemen, that achieving growth requires us to also focus on the country's physical infrastructure, including road and highway networks. You'll recall that during 2014, Section 2 of the North-South Link of Highway 2000 was officially opened. Work on Section 1 came on us to Linstead, and Section 3, Monito Torres, is ongoing and will be completed in 2016. Step by step, mile by mile, we are paving new pathways to growth and sustainable <coughs> development. In agriculture, the government's Agroparks Initiative is primarily about expanding the agricultural supply and linkages chain, increasing import substitution, and activating underutilized rural land and labor. There are currently eight agroparks in successful implementation with expected completion of another agropark in the next three to six months. Ladies and gentlemen, over 5,000 people are benefiting, benefiting from the direct employment one, four, one, and 2,700 and 11 hectares of underutilized land have been brought into agricultural production. The agricultural industry is our second largest employer, accounting for approximately 16% of the Jamaican labor force. And as you are aware, it has strong linkages to the tourism and manufacturing industries. Through a linkages technical working group, we are identifying more creative ways to effectively connect buyers and sellers while addressing the issues affecting the trade as they arise. We're already, we have seen progress from this working group. It is important to note that the group comprises persons from the public and the private sector. This is another example of the government's commitment to engage all stakeholders. The Logistics Sector Initiative is being rolled out on a phased basis. This includes the privatization of the Kingston Container Terminal, the judging of the Kingston Harbor, and by mid-year, the Port Authority of Jamaica will commence a partnership with an international operator for the modernization and expansion of the terminal. There's also the privatization and upgrading of Norman Manley International Airport. The selection of our preferred bidder should be completed by June 2015. Connected to these port developments in the government, it is the government's intention to pass the Special Economic Zone Act. And so, ladies and gentlemen, innovation is a necessary and built-in component of the growth inducement strategy. I have tasked the reconstituted National Commission on Science and Technology and the newly established National Cultural and Creative <coughs> Industries Commissions to work on plans to promote innovation. <coughs> Both commissions are working on st strategies to create an enabling environment for the growth of existing and emerging science, technology, creative, and cultural industries. I have mandated the teams to ensure that these important areas take their place as major economic drivers of growth job creation, and the expansion of business ownership. 
Ladies and gentlemen, economic growth and development is not beyond us. Economic growth must go hand in hand with social development. A gentler, safe and care society is within our reach. I take this opportunity to call on the Jamaican people to play their individual part in building our beautiful island, Jamaica. As a popular song reminds us, we are all in this thing together. I wish the Jamaica Stock Exchange, 10th Regional Conference on Investments and Capital Markets, and the Jamaica business community every success. I invite you to consider Alan Greenspan's philosophy on business. The former chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve will always be remembered for saying, I have found no greater satisfaction than achieving success through honest dealing and strict adherence to the view that for you to gain, those you deal with should gain as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, as Francis Gray says, yesterday is but a dream, tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to participate in this very important conference. Thank you, God bless.